at the endpoint. No tax for a OS, no tax for a CPU. Okay, and as a result of that, we truly can continue to drive the cost down of an end-to-end -end VDI solution with our zero client architecture. Sure. Okay. I mean, when I was thinking about usage cases and scenarios, I was thinking of something even more specific than that. That I mean, uh, maybe call centers. I think might be a, a good place for something like this. Um, certain environments where extremes of what the environment like makes it very difficult to have a PC in that environment because it breaks down. So like factory floors. Absolutely. Manufacturing areas. is a great place. We are getting a lot of traction there. You're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, manufacturing shops, hospitals, uh, educational institutions, let's say your classroom scenarios where lots of hands touch the endpoint. Okay. <laughs> So absolutely, in all of those scenarios, our product uh, is resonating extremely well. As, as a matter of fact, one of the first deployments and very successful deployment we had of our Pano Express product is in a classroom scenario in an educational institution. I perhaps should admit something to my audience that when I graduated from the university, I spent one year as a teacher in a school and hated every moment of it and uh, left the teaching profession. But uh, one of the things I had to do was deliver the IT component of my, my chosen subject. And of course, the, the number of times that snot-nosed Johnny would try and break the computer or do anything to like sort of stop the, uh, the course or the uh, classroom from running. And of course, I was savvy enough to know what they'd done, but something like a zero client in an environment like that would be just fantastic because there would be absolutely nothing they could do to me but it, you know when you talk about that classroom environment it, you know it, it has to be pretty robust because the kids put the computers through the mill uh, yeah. and if you can take out that compute element and just give them a, a, a device that you know gives them something remotely it, it, there's much more centralized management that can be done in that particular way mm -hmm. so if i can take that on an, uh, a little bit further then would we say that something like uh, the Pano device would be good for a home office worker or somebody who, um, you know, works remotely a lot, you know, somebody maybe has, you know, a space where, I don't know, maybe one week they're on the road and next week they're sat at home. W would a, a zero client be a good fit in that scenario at all? Um. I think uh, conceptually, absolutely. I think uh, zero-ness of the endpoint and then the zero client architecture that we have is very well suited for those kind of use case scenarios. But as a company, we are currently really focused on um, small to mid-sized enterprise uh, office worker scenario is really what we are focused on right now. Um, as we go forward, that's clearly one of the potential segments that uh, one can look at. Uh, my, my belief is that uh, the Soho market, which is sort of a small office, home office uh, kind of opportunity, uh, will get addressed in at least a couple of different ways as we go forward. Uh, one way would be that, okay, a small office or a home office will deploy a very simple home appliance, which essentially will essentially be a server connecting into the internet. And this server will essentially host the virtual desktops and then a bunch of zero clients in the household will be able to connect to that either over a wireless network or a wired network in the house. Uh, that's kind of one scenario. The other scenario would be that zero clients directly plug into some sort of broadband and are able to access desktops from some sort of backend cloud service. Okay, so I think these are scenarios that I see see playing themselves out as we go forward in terms of how the zero clients will work. But are zero clients the right architecture? Absolutely. You know, I have three kids um, that my wife and myself, so we have at least four computers in the house. And guess what my primary job is when I'm not in the office? I'm an IT admin for my family. Me too. Okay, so um, that's a real issue. And hence with that, that creates a very real opportunity. And one more time, the zero client architecture with virtualization of the desktop makes a whole lot of sense for that market as well. But having said that, I believe it will take some time for that particular problem statement to turn into a real market opportunity that vendors like Pano can go after. And we do intend to go in that direction as we go forward. Yeah. I guess the way to achieve that is to make it so easy and so commoditized that you can do that. I mean, I'm sure your family and my family are very, uh, they have a very, very good time of it because they have me and you to support yeah. the technology. So, you know, I sorted out the DHCP issues just so people know that when the device boots, one way to kind of get it up and running is boot to DHCP and you have 
uh, one of these vendor class entries in the DHCP scope, which Ooh. does take five minutes to type it in, and then you type in the IP address of the panel manager, so the device, once it gets the DHCP address, knows how to carry on with the connectivity. And that's great if you've got somebody like me who knows his way around DHCP and goes, oh yeah, that, that vendor class uh, entries that I learned on my M M uh, MCSC all those years ago, now there's actually a reason that I learned that. Because uh, when I learned all that stuff about DHCP in, I don't know, Windows 2000 or 2003, I was like, I don't see myself ever using this. All I want DHCP to do is hand out an IP address. Well, now I've got a usage case for doing that. But uh, for your average home user, I don't think uh, they, they don't have uh, four servers up in the, in the spare room with uh, an NFS backend, with uh, vSphere and all the virtual machines and yep. a DHCP. So it, it's about commoditization if you want to deliver that environment. It has to be a device that you plug in. I think right. that idea of actually having a, a Soho server that hosts the virtual desktops that they're connecting to is a very interesting one because the way I was looking at it was, you know, if I signed up to a new ISP, the black box that I plug into uh, the ADSL or into the cable, it, it has the access, but is the device that allows me to get my virtual desktop from a cloud. I hadn't thought of doing it in a different way, which is actually producing a kind of like a mini virtualized environment mm -hmm. to deliver uh, compute to various people. So it's a, another way of doing it. The reason I'm so excited by this is that I, I'm living on a new development here, which is in a rural location. And I'm thinking, is, is there an opportunity for me to be had here that I can be the, ser the cloud service provider for Portland Great Park? You know, you know? I've got an old uh, laptop. You know, well, don't worry about that. You know, I've got my own service here, redundant power connections. Uh, mm -hmm. You can have the latest flavor of Windows. You know, I will sort all that out for you. But uh, quite whether I want to extend my IT responsibilities beyond my house to yeah. include all my neighbours as well is something I, I'm not sure I really want to take that on, on at the moment. But it's an interesting uh, proposition, I think. And particularly as you know, networks are becoming more and more powerful, even sort of for uh, consumer class users out there, um, this vision that we are discussing is going to become more and more real as we go forward. Uh, absolutely, I think. A lot of the services are moving back into the cloud. Why not the desktop? It's going to happen. Okay. And our belief is a zero client, a true zero client, at the end of the day, is the right endpoint strategy, even for subscribing and tapping into the services from the cloud. Well, um, think about that as well, if you think about it from a home perspective, the less mm -hmm. the device needs to have any configuration in it, the more the customer, if you think of an end home user, is going to get an out of the box experience. Because Absolutely. We all, we all know with retail products, if they don't work straight away, you can feed that straight into a uh, contact us through email or contact us by telephone to support them. The less, less there is on the device, the more it just works, yeah. the less than then you have to worry about the cost of actually supporting those people who buy the product in the first place. Yeah, I mean, you can think of uh, telephony uh, or telephone networks as perhaps one of the first cloud service. Mm. You go back 80 years ago or whatever when the initial Marbell started this as a, as a uh, broad-based service uh, for mass consumers. Uh, imagine in that scenario, uh, a telephone service provider not only have to worry about providing the telephony service, but also had to worry about uh, configuring every telephone handset, had to configure, you know, patch update, if you will, uh, every uh, telephone handset. That entire industry would have never taken off the way it did. Okay. So it's very analogous that the, the moment you start pushing more and more things into the data center and from there into the private cloud and from there into the public cloud, it's going to actually force the providers to actually adopt the zero client architecture more and more. Mm -hmm. You cannot have a managed client, no matter how thin, you just cannot afford to have any kind of managed client in that kind of scenario. It has to be a zero client, again, as defined by Panologic. And our belief is that's going to create a fantastic opportunity for the endpoint IP that we are developing right now. Mm. Uh, we have a first example of that where one of our first OEM partner, which is Fujitsu, has taken essentially our zero client IP and embedded that into a monitor, mm. where you just plug the monitor into the network and off you go in terms of accessing your desktop from the data center. 
We believe the zero client footprint will find its way into all kinds of very interesting alternate devices and appliances as we go forward, uh, where there will be no processing burden uh, at the end point. It's all managed back in the data center or in the cloud. And that's kind of the future direction that we see happening, and we are very excited in terms of how our architecture as defined today is going to be future-proof in that regard. Sure. Well, I guess that leads us on to my, my final question, which is about the future. Um, I mean, clearly from your perspective, you want to integrate with as many vendors as, as possible. Um, and I know that uh, there's, there's a very tight integration uh, between Panologic and VMware and Virtual Center right now, which is what got me interested in the company. Where do you see yourself going with that? Are you, do you want to make that integration with VMware even deeper? Uh, because um, I know you have your own deployment process within Panel Manager, which basically spins off virtual desks use, using the templates, but there's no hooks at the moment into the link clone feature. So if I have VMware View and I've bought VMware Composer, for example, I can create many link clones and then point Panel Manager to them. But that's very much two like kind of separate um, interfaces, if you like. And I mean, I've been recently looking at uh, Quest's V workspace uh, system, and they they've got their own kind of link clones, uh, which are independent of VMware View, because in a way, link clones have always been there in VMware. It's just never been exposed up into the UI that end users could use them in the way that we've done for virtual desktops and. All that VMware Composer does is give you a UI to, to spin off the desktops. So that's one side, uh, you know, are you going to get even more deeper integration, your own type of link clones? And then on the opposite side of that is where's Citrix Zen uh, desktop in, in your view of the world? Where's uh, Microsoft's kind of virtual desktops? Because I imagine for an organization like Pano, you don't want to be too fo over focused in supporting one particular vendor. Uh, you've got to open up the product to as many vendors as possible. So without breaching any NDAs or roadmaps, can you give us an idea of where where you think you might be going with that kind of integration with the other parties? Sure. Um, first of all, VMware has been a fantastic partner for Panologic, and we continue to work very closely with them. And yes, to answer your question, we will continue to create tighter and tighter integration of our VDI solution with the VMware infrastructure. Um, the approach that we will take, or we are taking right now, is to take the management layer that the Panel Logic solution has, which is sort of Panel Manager, is is, is the tool set, uh, to make it more and more interoperable. Because at the end of the day, the core focus that Panel has, the core value that we bring to the table, is a zero client architecture with zero endpoints and a very unique protocol that we have, which is able to discover these endpoints, to be able to light these up, and be able to manage these endpoints. Okay. We have brokering capability in Panel Manager, which is a means to an end, not necessarily kind of the core focus for the company. Um, so uh, to the extent that we can tightly integrate with the, the management layer of the hypervisors, uh, it just brings more and more benefit to our customers. So we will continue to go deeper in that regard in terms of our working relationship with VMware and how the two products work together. Uh, fundamentally, Panel Logic product, the way it is built and architected, it is hypervisor agnostic. There is really nothing in the product which is dependent on a specific hypervisor, if you, if you will. Uh, so the key integration point is really with the management layer of the corresponding hypervisor, and that's where we are in the process of making our backend more and more open and interoperable with all the, all the different solutions that you outlined beyond VMware. Mm -hmm. And yes, absolutely, our intention is to kind of uh, support uh, other emerging solutions in, in the virtualization space as we go forward. Okay. Well, um I think uh, we must be near to our time. I'd, I'd like to thank you very much for coming on uh, the vendor wag this, this wing. Um, it's always nice to speak to the source of this sort of information rather than wading through PDFs and, and other material because that Q&A means that things can come out or that I can think of things that I might not have thought of. So thank you very much for your, your time today. It's been very uh, informative. Thank you, Mike, for having me on and this opportunity to share the Panologic story. Thank you. Take care.